And now it gives me gives me a great pleasure uh, to introduce our opening keynote speaker, His Excellency Governor Abdul Latif Al Othman. Mr. Al Othman is governor of the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority, also known as SAGIA. And General Al Othman began his career with Saudi Aramco in 1981 and worked on a variety of mega projects including the Rastanora Refinery Modernization Project, the Al Qasim Refinery Project, and the Southwest Refinery Project. He later served as Vice President of Saudi Aramco Affairs, Vice President of Finance for Saudi Aramco, and Chairman of the Board of Directors for Sadara Chemical Company. He has well over 30 years of experience planning and managing petrochemicals and oil and gas projects. Governor Al Othman received his master's degree in business administration from MIT as a Sloan Fellow. We are greatly honored that he made the trip to the United States to join us today. Please help me in welcoming to the podium Governor Al Othman. Uh, thank you, Ed, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege uh, for me and my colleagues to be here uh, today. And I want to extend our uh, appreciation for the U.S. Saudi Business uh, Council, uh, its uh, leadership. Uh, the co-chairman, Mohammed al Mahdi and Peter Robertson, uh, its president and CEO, Ed Burton, and all those who work relentlessly on maintaining this great and strategic business relationships between Saudi Arabia and U.S. businesses growing and nurturing year after year, and hopefully this is one of the events that will take it to even a more strategic and new dimension. Uh, I want to also uh, congratulate you for bringing about this event. I know uh, that uh, you and your team have worked uh, very hard on this. Uh, it's only uh, a few months when we talked about it, and here we are uh, witnessing a very uh, respectable and admirable attendance uh, today, uh, quite an accomplishment. <coughs> Uh, it's a great privilege for me to take part in this forum on the automotive industry here in Detroit. One of the reasons this is so special for me is that I owe a debt of gratitude for my education to the philanthropy of one of the greatest automotive leaders and executives of all times, the longtime chairman of General Motors, Alfred Sloan. As Ed mentioned, I uh, am very proud to have obtained my MBA as a Sloan Fellow at the MIT Sloan School of Management. My friends, as we begin this forum on investment opportunities, I would like to ask you to consider this scenario. In a place considered by many to be an emerging economy, new ventures are formed to shorten supply chains so as to manufacture and sell vital products to fast-growing markets. The new firms are in a strategic transportation hub with low-cost access to natural resources essential for manufacturing. As the years unfold, the investments flourish and spur the growth of a strategic cluster of industries. These, in turn, create ideal conditions including infrastructure for new generations of innovative products and entirely new industries. Discerning investors profit as the enterprises progress from local to regional to a global dimension. Now I can imagine that some of you may be thinking, where have I heard this before? Have I read this in a textbook? Does this sound all familiar? It should, because I am summarizing the economic history of this great city of Detroit. 
since the, 19, the 1860s. This was when Jeremiah Dwyer made a bold move to tighten the supply chain for manufacturer and sales of cast iron stoves. Before Dwyer took his step into entrepreneurship, Detroit, Detroiters bought heating and cooking stoves from distant upstate New York. Dwyer accessed the abundant iron ore from Michigan and coal from nearby sources. He emphasized the quality in manufacturing and he was ambitious in marketing. He and other visionaries of that time recognized that Detroit's geography made it not just a regional transport center, but potentially a major port for worldwide trade. Detroit became the stove capital of the world. During the final decades of the 19th century, Detroit grew phenomenally as a center for making railway cars, ships, and ship engines, as well as stoves. And all of us know here now uh, the rest of the story. Detroit developed the ideal manufacturing and logistics space for a daring inno innovation that transformed the world, the automobile. Detroit earned world renowned not only for being the motor city, but also, as I see it, for being the management city. It was here that innovators, including Henry Ford, Ransom Alls, Alfred Sloan, and so many others pioneered in modern mo methods of mass production, supply chain management, and consumer advertising, to name just a few of business success, successes in today's world. At least a century before Harvard Business School elaborated the theory of industrial clusters, Detroit exemplified the reality of industrial clusters. Ladies and gentlemen, conditions and strategies for industrial growth comparable to Detroit's phenomenal story are in place today in Saudi Arabia. My country has abundant bauxite and low-cost energy for smeltering to produce aluminum. Saudi Arabia has vast affordable supplies of oil and natural gas as feedstock for petrochemicals. Our seaports on the Red Sea have easy access to Europe and Africa, and our ports on the Arabian Gulf are ideal for shipping products to the fast-growing markets of East Asia. Saudi Arabia has long been vital for fueling the world's cars, trucks, and buses. Today, it's also poised to become a major world producer of automotive components. Saudi Arabia already is a home for an AC Delco battery manufacturing plant. Isuzu now operates a truck manufacturing factory in the kingdom. Tata Motors is exploring the possibility of building a plant for its subsidiary Jaguar and Land Rover in Saudi Arabia. The plant will be supplied from a state-of-the-art aluminum smelter operated by the joint venture of Alcoa and the Saudi Arabian mining company Ma'adin. This facility will be part of an integrated auto cluster that is being developed under the leadership of the National Industrial Cluster Development Program. Moreover, the kingdom is now a world power in petrochemicals. Joining our largest and most admirable chemical company, Sabic, new entrants that are getting into the downstream chemical and specialty chemicals that are playing a catalytical role in attracting conversion industries campuses, making various plastics and many automotive parts composed of those plastics. One of those joint ventures is a partner from this uh, state, also Dow Chemical, its partnership with Saudi Aramco and Sadara. As the world seeks ever lighter vehicles in order to conserve fuel, consumer trends are favorable to aluminum and plastics as O2 components. Today we will hear expert speakers present a great many specific details about existing 
and planned investments to make Saudi Arabia a global player in the automotive components. For the balance of my remarks, I wish to provide a general overview of the favorable climate for American investments in the kingdom. First, let me encapsulate the remarkable history of business relationships between Saudi Arabia and the United States. It's a history that dates to the 1930s, when American geologists, backed by American investors, discovered the first commercial quantities of oil in the kingdom. That prescient, prescient investment developed what are now the world's largest oil reserve. This year, as we mark the 80th anniversary of Saudi Aramco, the company created by those investors and explorers, the United States is the world's leading consumer of energy, and Saudi Arabia is the world's leading petroleum exporter. Today, Saudi investment creates and sustains many good jobs in the United States. For example, at the largest refinery in the U.S., the Motiva joint venture of Saudi Aramco and Shell in Port Arthur, Texas, so as Sabic Innovative Plastic, a multi-billion dollar investment that employs more, more than 7,000 employees with leading R&D and innovation centers. American investments in Saudi Arabia energy and petrochemical sector, of course, is also substantial but so is U.S. investments in other sectors. General Electric CEO Jeff Emelt visited Saudi Arabia last September to announce a one billion package of investments. One is a healthcare learning and simulation center in Riyadh. Another is the expansion of GE's manufacturing technology center in Dammam. And yet another is a partnership with a new center to foster entrepreneurship in the kingdom. With the investment package, GE plans to double its workforce in Saudi Arabia. The educational and people-to-people -people exchanges between our two countries are also momentous. Nearly 70,000 Saudi students now are enrolled in U.S. universities in every state of the Union. There is a powerful natural synergy between these exchanges and the probability of success in a bilateral investment. The fundamentals make Saudi Arabia today a highly attractive financial and business environment for investors. The kingdom's economy is growing and its finances are strong. With a population of 27 million, ours is the largest Arab country in the Middle East. It's a youthful population, 61% within the working age and 35% under the age of 15. Internet connectivity, mobile devices, and social media, media are per per pervasive in Saudi Arabia, especially among the younger population. Our economy is one of the largest. At $670 billion in 2012, our GDP ranks 18th in the world and the first in the Middle East. Saudi GDP has more than tripled during the past 10 years. Inflation is low and the currency is stable as a fixed exchange rate to the US dollar. The kingdom has a large foreign reserve position. Government debt is less than 3.8% of the GDP, down from 100% in 1999. Our banks are well capitalized, managed, and regulated. Saudi Arabia is the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in the Middle East, 141 billion over the, next, over the past five years. This along with $718 billion in government spending over the same period has promoted sustained economic growth and offered lucrative investment opportunities. The kingdom belongs to the group of 20 leading economies of the world, the only G20 member in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia has been a member of the World Trade Organization since 2005. Accession to the WTO required an intense program of economic reforms and market opening. 
But since joining the WTO instead of taking a rest, the kingdom accelerated reform. As a result, Saudi Arabia has now moved many places forward in the most closely watched surveys of global competitiveness. We are amongst the top 20 best places to do business in the annual survey of the World Bank IFC. And we are also on the top 20 list of the World Economic Forum Global Competitiveness Report. Built upon these fundamentals are superb incentives and attractions for investments. Investors in Saudi Arabia enjoy a highly fav favorable lending environment. The kingdom's public and private financial institutions are amply cap capitalized and committed to providing credit to launch and expand businesses. For example, the Saudi Industrial Development Fund provides low-cost, medium, and long-term capital for industrial projects for as much as 50% of a project, up to $133 million. The kingdom has no income tax, no property tax, no sales tax, and no value-added tax. The corporate tax is impressively moderate at 20%, with ability to carry losses forward indefinitely to offset future taxes. Full repatriation of capital, profit, and dividend is allowed, subject to a 5% withholding tax. There is no minimum capital requirements for foreign investors in most sectors. To improve the local supply chain, products manufactured in Saudi Arabia enjoy preferences in procurement by the government. The manufacturers may be as much as 100% foreign owned. There is a customs duties exemption on imported machinery, equipment, raw materials, and spare parts if they are for industrial use. Saudi Arabia also offers a customs refund for raw material imports that are processed and exported as finished goods. Goods made in Saudi Arabia benefit from absence of export duties within the 17 countries of the general Arab free trade area. Export credit financing guarantees and insurances are available through the Saudi export system. So investors not only enjoy a large and sustainable market domestically, but can benefit by being in Saudi Arabia to serve the broader Arab region. Low-cost land for business is available in Kingdom's 14 industrial cities and the progressive economic cities. Electricity and water for business also are available at competitive prices. Saudi Arabia is progressive in the area of R&D. The kingdom offers significant development, finance, and research grants through institutions such as King Abdulaziz Center for Science and Technology, CAXT, and the King Abdullah University for Science and Technology, KAUST. The ample funds available for R&D in Saudi Arabia are in sharp cut contrast with tight financial conditions prevailing in front of scientists in Europe, North America, and elsewhere. In addition to our major investments and in research within the kingdom, Saudi research investments now include centers in the United States. One of these, I'm delighted to say, is New Saudi Aramco Fuel Technology Center based here in Detroit in order to engage with U.S. auto manufacturers. This center is also looking at environmental issues related to future internal combustion engines by studying carbon capture for mobile sources such as vehicles, an area, to my knowledge, that it hasn't been adequately studied by many uh, concerned entities on the environment. Saudi Arabia today stands ready to become one of the world's leading transport and logistics hub. The nation already boasts numerous land and sea routes to Eastern Europe, the Indian subcontinent, Middle East, and North Africa, as well as Asia. The government, along with domestic and international private partners, are now making substantial investments in sophisticated transportation networks that will leverage the kingdom's competitive advantage. 
Saudi Arabian domestic cargo demand is expected to grow by 4 to 5% compound annual rate through 2020, while international flows are expected to grow 5% and between 7 and 8% for air and sea cargo respectively. Developing a world-class multimodal transportation system in Saudi Arabia will improve operating efficiencies and speed to market for business looking for strategically located transportation systems for both distribution and supply networks. Low cost of fuel makes the kingdoms an ideal site to centralize energy intensive logistical activities such as refueling. Investments valued at 100 billion are anticipated in the logistics sector over the next 10 years. These include seaports, airports, roads, and railway lines, logistics centers and warehouses, service facilities also will be in great demand. My associates and I at Sagia are in the business to help you make profitable investments. Through our website, we offer online services for investment applications, business reg registration, and setup process. And we work relentlessly to ensure timely processing of your investment transactions. To summarize, Saudi Arabia offers a superb combination of advantages for investors. We have an affluent, young, growing, tech-savvy consumers market and an educated national and international labor force. We foster competitive through low ta we foster competitive through low taxes and low cost of credit, real estate and energy. And the kingdom's public and private sectors are committed to spending hundreds of billions of dollars on key industries, infrastructures and R&D. Ladies and gentlemen, 80 years ago when Saudi Arabia wanted to establish its oil and gas industry, American pioneers were the first and the fastest to respond. Today we are witnessing an unprecedented opportunity to establish an auto industry cluster in the same place, presented to the same people, different times, different opportunities, but it is those who take the first mover advantage will reap the benefits. The opportunity is in front of our eyes and we should seize it. Thank you very much.